Hello sweet friends. It's August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads and this is a ridiculously large winter book haul. <laughs> Welcome if you're new here. I have so many new faces. Thank you so much for subscribing and being here. So so happy to have you and welcome back if you've been here a while. I have accumulated a lot of books since I think this is from December, January, somewhere around there. These are like all thrifted and used books. Um, I absolutely love thrifting. I absolutely love just finding really weird old unique books, collecting some classics, just making my shelves extra delicious with a ton of books and I'm so excited to share them with you today like they geek me out so much so I'm gonna be going through all the books um there are a lot here so I'm gonna try to go kind of quickly I'll tell you a little bit about the plot where I found it um what intrigued me about it all that fun stuff so I hope you can get cozy and if you watched my most recent vlog ta-da I shifted myself over for filming so I can show off this new piece that I recently thrifted at an antique mall. Isn't it beautiful? This little like shape? Stunning. So uh, this is in chronological order of like when I picked them up. So let's go ahead and get started. I hope you all are doing really well and can cozy up and let's gush about some books. So if you watched a vlog, I'll link it down below. You might be familiar with the first like I think five of these books because I did pick them up in a thrifting vlog. It was my first time going back to one of my favorite secondhand bookstores and I found some delicious goodies. Very delicious. Also, uh, it's very windy today and my apartment makes this really scary noise when the wind hits it. Like it sounds like a horror movie. So I don't know how much of that sound is gonna be picked up, but it it's kind of terrifying. So we're just gonna kind of like work through it. It I don't know why, just in my apartment, it sounds so scary. So here we go, first book. The first book is Fiona Range by Mary McGarry Morris. Absolutely in love with this cover. That's what intrigued me because the spine, I mean, how can you ignore it? absolutely beautiful so this is a like literary fiction following a young woman named fiona and she has just like made a lot of reckless decisions in her life with good intentions um and she wants to change she kind of hits rock bottom she wants to change her life and becomes involved with a lot of different relationships and men that she struggles with so definitely way more of like a yeah literary fiction might be a little bit more of a slower paced book but it follows just like one woman's life so it's been a while since i've read kind of this like in-depth just literary fiction of one person's life i feel like so uh i am excited to pick this one up i just love the cover it's so beautiful i got this one like i said the first five are from a local charity shop or thrift store so that's Fiona range next we have a very interesting one I think this is like very indie independently published this is called true tangerine a collection of intertwining tales of the everyday lives of ordinary people by Daisy Montego this is I don't know why I was just like so attracted to this like orange and the coffee and it is like short stories of people's lives it says like chapter 9 Jenna's story and then it goes Evan's story of these people and for some reason it just for me it feels like when you are sitting at a coffee shop and you see all these people around you and you really want to know like a little bit more about their lives and you realize that they have their own separate life and they have their own issues and they have their own conflicts and personal issues and whatever so this just feels like that's a collection of very short stories uh let's see how many chapters there are in here there are 31 different chapters or stories so I am really excited for this. I feel like it would just be like a really cool literary fiction, getting into the minds of, like she says, everyday ordinary people, just walking down the street, people that you will never know their story. I just think it's a really cool concept and I really love that it's like this indie kind of published thing. I think it's awesome. And it does take place in a small Midwestern town and I'm from the Midwest, so. That helps too. Next we have another short story collection. Look at me go. This is called Girl to Girl by Julie Ann Peters. Um, I have not read a Julie Ann Peters book before but um, I know that she wrote the story Luna and this deals with people's um, teenagers specifically struggling with their sexual identity and personalities. I believe Luna is a really big staple in kind of like the YA LGBTQ community like when it came out I think early 2000s about a transgender teen. So this is just short stories about teenagers coming to their own personality and sexual identity. And I love reading stuff like that. I felt like I would vibe with this um, because I absolutely loved 
a short story collection called What Counts as Love by Marion Crotty. I think that's the author's name. I absolutely love that short story collection about women, about what it's like living in the world as a woman, uh, about the different relationships with other people, with men, with friends, family, our bodies. Absolutely really love like feminist short story literature like this, um, but this does seem like it might follow a bunch of teenagers from all walks of life and all different sexual identities. And I am really excited for this short story collection. Next we have a really good find because when I posted about this one in that vlog, people were saying that this is the coolest copy. It's At the Back of the North Wind by George MacDonald. I had never heard of this book and then several of you did comment saying that this is such a good find because this copy was probably from the like the 60s, 70s. Has these really cool illustrations in here as well. It's George MacDonald's best known and most loved children's book. It is the story of Diamond, the cab horse, and young Diamond, the little boy who was swept off to the land at the back of the North Wind. So it takes place in the streets of London and it's haunting and memorable. I'm really excited for this one. Again, these illustrations are just so stunning and I can't believe I found such this copy is in such great shape for it being published in like the 60s or 70s so absolutely beautiful this was such a good find i have been slowly collecting kind of classic children's literature and ya and just kind of understanding classic children's literature a little bit more and i feel like this is such a good introduction to i don't know this era i can't remember exactly when this was originally published but i feel like this is such a great addition to my classic children's literature kind of collection so yeah, really cool find. And then lastly from that same thrift uh, video slash visit, I got The Angle of Repose by Wallace Stegner. I have heard of this book my whole life, I feel like. I feel like I still don't quite understand. I don't know if it's like worth the hype to read it, but I saw it. The books at this thrift store in particular, it was like 25 cents or 50 cents for a paperback and 75 cents for a hardcover book. So I was like, why not? So this is the Angle of Repose, this is a Penguin Classic Edition, and it tells the story of a retired professor of history and author of books about the western frontier who returns to his ancestral home of Grass Valley, California in the Sierra Nevada. Wheelchair bound with a crippling bone disease and dependent on others for his every need, Ward is nonetheless embarking on a search of monumental proportions. So kind of going back into his own personal history to figure out some things about his family lineage and that kind of stuff, almost like self-discovery through ancestral ties. So I'd be really curious to see if this is kind of worth the, the ubiquity, I think, of this title, Angle of Repose. I feel like it's just such a well-known title, but I never knew the plot, never knew if I should read it or not, so I did pick it up. And this copy is beautifully water damaged as well. I'm a big fan of that. So that is the end of that little section of the books that I found at my local charity shop. Okay, next, uh, my dad and I went thrifting at Goodwill and the next few, oh my gosh, so many, I think maybe all the way down to like this book right here is from when we went to Goodwill together. <laughs> so uh, the first one I found is The Rose Garden by Susanna Kearsley. This is like a historical fiction of a woman, maybe in modern day, who goes back to her rolling estate that she grew up in, or maybe it's like from her family, and she goes to live in this house and she's able to see past history in the house. So kind of like ghosts that are haunting this home and she ends up falling into a romantic relationship with one of the like ghosts, a man not from her time. And I don't know, it just sounds like so cozy. I don't read a lot of romances, but I do love a good love story. So I feel like this could be a really good love story if it's written well and I enjoy it. But just the atmosphere alone of like this gothic mansion, this like seeing back in time, like it just sounds like such a vibe to me and I'm really, really excited about it. But it also just seems like it would just be a fun book as well. Like it doesn't have to be anything that has a bigger meaning necessarily, but it sounds like it could just be fun at the same time. So that's why I picked this one up. Yeah, I just really nice hardcover. I love this like back photo. Usually I'm not a fan of photographs on books, but this just kind of a vibe to me. It just works. So that's the Rose Garden. Then I found Mother's Milk by Edward St. Aubin. 
This cover, again, just delicious. I've definitely been picking up books lately that the covers just speak to me. <laughs> That's what gets my attention, you know? It's just that vibrant blue with this historical painting is just so stunning to me. And this one is definitely a literary fiction that follows a family. It says on the back here, scathingly witty family portraits examining the shifting allegiances between parents, children, husbands, and wives. The novel's perspective carousels between each member of the Melrose family, which is a family that has been featured in this author's other books. It looks like there was a trilogy called Some Hope, which I've never heard of or read from. This would be my first time reading from this author, but I'm sure it's a standalone, but it's just based off of a family in another series he has. So it just follows a family. It's been a long time since I've read like a family literary fiction. It's a genre or trope or kind of niche that I've gravitated away from. I've talked about it a lot on my channel. Before I started booktube, probably like 2014 to 2017, I was really into literary fiction about families and I would still pick them up even up until like right before I started my booktube channel before realizing it wasn't really my favorite genre or niche anymore. It I feel like I've kind of figured out more about my own taste and what I enjoy in literature and it's not necessarily about families anymore. Dynamic families, domestic conflicts, like it's just not really something I read about, but I feel like this one would be a good exploration back into that genre of literary fiction that just follows a family and maybe doesn't have like a huge plot. So I'm curious to pick this one up. We'll see if I jive with that style of writing or almost like lack of plot. I do love books that don't necessarily have a plot, but it's just when it's about family. I just feel like I can't connect with it anymore and I don't really feel it personally, but I am excited to read Mother's Milk and this cover just really helps solidify my decision to read it. <laughs> Next little find, this is the coolest thing I feel like I have found lately and that is Emily Dickinson Selected Poems. This cover, I can't, it's so small and like pocket sized and this cover is stunning. So this is the Dover Thrift Edition and I have a big book of like all of Emily Dickinson poetry but like I haven't read it because it's such a thick book and I don't know what to do with it. I don't know how to read it whereas I feel like this would be perfect to just like put into my bag, go on a walk in the woods when it's warm enough out, take it with me and just read it. Like it's so so cute and quaint and the spine isn't even broken. It seems like whoever donated this like didn't even open it. <laughs> um, yeah I can't even open it past that. I'm gonna have to break the spine. But there's hardly a spine. It's just so stunning. Look at this, like, it's just a vibe. It's a vibe all around. Like, <laughs> it's so cute. This was such a good find. I, I can't wait to like carry this in like a little tote bag later this year. So really happy about this one. Another good find was The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnell. This is a book that I've heard so much about specifically on booktube and it had been on my like either Hoopla or Libby's audiobook kind of tag. I've been saving it and I just haven't listened to the audiobook because I feel like I would enjoy reading this more. So this is like a YA book. I think it's a little bit of fantasy too, like YA fantasy about a girl named Luna who uh, as a baby ate moonlight instead of starlight and she gets powers and extraordinary magic. I don't know a whole lot about the plot and I'm kind of keeping it that way because I just want to be taken for a ride with this one but I've heard so many wonderful things about it um, from other booktubers and the booktubers who have read it have said that this is like one of their favorite books if not one of their favorite kind of like YA I don't know, is this more children's or middle grade? I'm not sure, but I'm really excited. I feel like this is like such a cute, cozy, magical fantasy book. I don't read a lot of fantasy, but when I do, I feel like it is mainly like y like younger YA, um, where it's just like extra magical and cozy. So I'm really excited. This was such a good thrift store, Goodwill find. This next one is really unique, and that is Mozart, the Jupiter Symphony by Elaine Sisman. So this comes from the Cambridge Music Handbooks. So stunning. This is a guide to Mozart's last and most celebrated symphony and explores the historical background and aesthetic context of the work as well as the music itself. I'm going to continue reading on the back because I just honestly don't really know much about this and I haven't opened it up yet, 
but it says the early chapters examine the expectations of the symphony in Mozart's Vienna, Mozart's career in 1788, the year of the three last symphonies, and the changing reception of the Jupiter over the subsequent 200 years. A separate chapter is then devoted to each movement of the symphony with musical discussion illuminated by a broad array of topics. Finally, a lucid exposition of rhetoric reveals the connections between elevated and learned styles and the sublime, enabling the reader to grasp the effect Mozart's music had upon his contemporaries. So I originally picked this up because I am literally surrounded by musicians in my personal life. Life. My sister's a musician, my dad's a musician, my partner's a musician, a lot of my friends are musicians, <laughs> all of my old roommates are musicians, so it's just something that is I'm constantly surrounded by is music. So I picked this up with the idea of like gifting it to my dad or my sister and then I got really selfish and I was like I just want to read it myself and if it starts going into like very specific musical things that I don't understand. I can read around it and then hand this off to my dad or my sister or somebody in my life who would understand more of that like actual music concept. There are some uh, bars and math and I don't know anything about it, but I find it so fascinating. I would love to know the history of the historical context about the time and place that the symphony was written and a little bit more about the expectation and how it shaped the world after it came out. I just think that's so fascinating and it's just such a cool interesting book like very very niche and I like that and I want to learn more about it so that is the Jupiter Symphony. Okay up next I found The Dancing Girl of Izu and Other Short Stories by Yasunari Kawabata. This is a gorgeous little book. This is one of the most influential figures in modern Japanese fiction. Written between 1923 and 1929, these works form a shadow biography of the author's early years, revealing fresh glimpses into Kawabata's haunting vision of loss, longing, and memory. So it is like classic Japanese literature. I have not read anything by Yasunari Kawabata, and I love this little format, little short stories again. Definitely want to read more classic literature that isn't just from white people. <laughs> I really want to broaden classic literature and so finding this kind of stuff used at Goodwill is just so so awesome or at thrift stores. So so happy I found this. I definitely want to read more classic literature from around the world and not just from mostly like white men which is what I've been reading so far this year I feel like is a lot of classic white literature. So definitely wanting to broaden my horizons and read more and I'm so excited for this one. I feel like it already just skimming through it. There's a lot of dialogue. I'm so curious to see like what these different short stories are, but it includes the Dancing Girl of Izu, the Master of Funerals, Gathering Ashes, the Princess of the Dragon Palace, Moon, Horse Beauty, the Sea, a Prayer in the Mother Tongue, and the Setting Sun, and just so many more. So I'm really excited for this one. This was a really, really good find. Okay, this next one's very interesting if you've been with me for a while now. I actually did pick up Gabriel Garcia Marquez's Chronicles of the Death Foretold. Uh, <laughs> if you've been following me for a while, you might know that I read Love in the Time of Cholera last year, probably around this time of year, February or March. And I hated it. I hated it so much. I thought it was really, uh, it was just not good um, for me. It was very, so many issues I had with that book. It was so sexist. It was really disgusting with pedophilia and just like topics of sexual abuse and rape and glorifying it and romanticizing it. And I just, it was not okay for me. I'm not a fan of that. So I did find this. I gave a chance on it because it is very short. I know that a lot of people love 100 Years of Solitude and I wanted to give another chance and because it's short it doesn't feel as big of a commitment as Love in the Time of Cholera. That book was huge and daunting and I could not get through it fast enough. It was just so laborious and I did not like any part of it really. I did think that the writing style was really unique and lyrical and beautiful but the content itself just drove me nuts. It was romanticizing stalking basically and I'm just like not a fan. So this one, Chronicles of a Death Foretold, is a man returns to the town where a baffling murder took place 27 years earlier determined to get to the bottom of the story. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna read the rest because I have no idea what this is about and again I feel like I want to kind of go in blind 
definitely want to read more classics and give authors another chance, especially when I hear so highly of their other books. So this is going to be my next chance. I do think this cover is very, very stunning. Look at that from the side. So picked up this little guy too. Next we have The Rose and the Beast Fairy Tales Retold by Francesca Lea Block. Oh, it's beautiful. Another sideways portrait. What are the odds of that? This is such a cute, small, again, very portable book of fairy tales that are retold. And look at this inside format. Are you kidding me? So easy to read, so accessible. It reads, with language that is both lyrical and distinctly her own, Francesca Leah Block turns nine fairy tales inside out. And I know I've chatted about it briefly, but like I did not grow up on fairy tales. I hardly know anything about fairy tales and it's definitely something I want to learn more about. I do have a copy somewhere up here of Norwegian folk tales. I want to read more for sure. It's just difficult because I don't know where to begin. So I feel like retellings, especially in this kind of format, can I just gush over this cover again? It's just so cute and beautiful. It just really called to me and it's just so, so easy to read with the format. It's such an interesting format. I've just never seen a book like this. Like it's so, the margins are huge. <laughs> I'm really excited for this one. I feel like it's so cool. And again, another kind of short story almost collection. So I'm really curious to see what fairy tales are being retold in here. There is no blurb on the back that goes over that. But each chapter is just one word. One word chapter title, which I love. So we have snow, tiny, glass, charm, wolf, rose, bones, beast, and ice. That intrigued me so much. I love it. <laughs> like minimal, so clean. I'm really excited for this one. So that is The Rose and the Beast. Next I have The Hours by Michael Cunningham. Beautiful cover. It's kind of like film daguerreotype almost. Again, this one seems like literary fiction. It takes place more in modern day. I believe this was published probably in the early 2000s, I want to say. No, 1998. So this is a late 90s book and it follows a group of women contemporary characters who are struggling with the conflicting claims of love and inheritance, hope and despair. But it draws inventively on the life and work of Virginia Woolf to tell the story. So I don't know what that's going to look like, like if they're going to be blatant references to Virginia Woolf's work in here or if these women's lives are going to kind of coincide with plots in Virginia Woolf stories. I have several books by Virginia Woolf on my physical TBR here, but so far I've only read one and that's Orlando. Absolutely loved Orlando. So I just think this is really unique and I hope I enjoy it. I'm really curious to see what this author does in intertwining Virginia Woolf with contemporary stories, especially late 90s. I have a thing with like 90s fiction. It's so good. <laughs> I've had so much good luck with 90s literature. Like it just, it slaps. It's great. So that is The Hours. Next one, friends. This next one, it was such a cool find. This one was again at Goodwill, but several weeks later when I returned to a different Goodwill, and that's Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I found this Apple Classics version. Very, very well loved. Look at that beautiful spine. So I have the Apple Classics edition of The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. So I thought this would be perfect. So well loved, so old, so uh, freakishly uh, falling apart a little bit, right in the middle, it's kind of falling apart. I've never read Little Women. The only Louisa May Alcott book I've ever read is Flower Fables, which is her first one that was ever published. And it's for like very, very small children. So it's about time that I get into Little Women. I'm just now getting into classics at this time in my life. So excited for that adventure of reading classics. I recently finished Middlemarch. <laughs> so proud of myself, but it made me really want to read classic literature by female authors about female characters in that time period. So I definitely want to read more Louise May Alcott. I want to read Jane Austen and Emily Bronte. I want to read so much more. So this is a great one, I feel like, for me to kind of like get more into that genre because Middlemarch was so big. If I can do Middlemarch, I can do Little Women. It makes the classic genre like way less intimidating to me to like start with Middlemarch. I don't know what's wrong with me, but starting with Middlemarch definitely makes this seem like a piece of cake. So I'm really excited to finally read Little Women. This copy is just so delicious so delicious. Great find. Continuing on with that same thrift store trip, 
to Goodwill at the same time that I found Little Women, I found this really rad collection of poetry called Shaking the Pumpkin, Traditional Poetry of the Indian North Americas by Jerome Rothenberg. So this is a collection, very heavy. I wish I could tell you all how heavy and thick this book is. Beautiful Native American indigenous poetry. I don't believe that all of these poems are by the same author. Oh yeah, here we go. Like the horse dance by Heheka Sapa, otherwise known as Black Elk. Um, and then it also says like what tribe they're from. So this is the Oglala Sioux. So this is just huge of indigenous poetry. And there's even some like little illustrations that go along with the poetry. So I, I struggle with reading poetry, like I referenced with Emily Dickinson's work. Like something this big, I just don't know the best way to read it. So this is definitely something that I'm not going to be able to like read cover to cover. I'm still trying to figure out my relationship to poetry. I know that sounds odd, but I just don't know how to read it. So uh, this just sounds so amazing. There's such a wide variety. Some of these poems are really, 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 really long and big, and some of them are very short. Some of them are just like huge run-on sentences like this one. This is just such a good find. So that's Shaking the Pumpkin. Uh, really, really excited to read this one. And again, just get new perspectives and in reading indigenous poetry and literature. Absolutely amazing. I can't believe I found this at Goodwill. So thank you to whoever donated before and there's also I am guessing it from the original language here and then possibly possibly translation down here just so interesting so this was published by the University of New Mexico Press so this is just a really really cool find and it was published in 1986 so very cool find I can't believe but I found this. Very, very cool. That is the end of stack one, friends. Now we are moving on to stack number two. I hope I'm going at a quick enough pace. There are just so many good books, friends. So many good books. So still continuing on with that last uh, Goodwill trip that still, I just, I just, when I go, I feel like I find not just like one good book, I find a lot of good books. <laughs> so it's hard for me to go into a thrift store and not find anything, especially when the prices are just so accessible. That's why I love used book shopping. And then you find unique things like Shaking the Pumpkin, 1980s Native American poetry. Like you just find such unique things or like the Jupiter symphonies. Like you you don't know what you're gonna find. And that's what I love about thrifting. Like I go in with no intention. Let's just see what's there and then pick up really, really cool stuff. Really cool things I've never heard of and I just love thrifting so much I could geek out about it all day. Up next, this is really cool. This is The Princess of Cleves by Madame de Lafayette, translated by Nancy Mitford. I had never heard of this one. I'm curious to see if it is like a classic or not. Like this copy is definitely very, very well loved. But it reads on the back, perhaps one of the greatest works of French literature is Madame de Lafayette's The Princess of Cleves, often described as the first of all modern novels. This is the classic translation, which was first brought out in 1951. So it was originally published in 1678. This recreates with matchless vitality the lives and loves of the 16th century courtiers of King Henry II of France. So we encounter historic figures. The queen tells the story of the consuming passion of the young Duke de Nemours for the beautiful wife of his friend, the Prince of Cleves. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to anticipate with this, but what a cool find. Has anyone heard of this? Can you let me know? Like I didn't take, I went to art school. I didn't take any like classic literature classes in university. And I feel like that would be like the one place I would hear about this book. So let me know if this is something you've heard of considering it says on the back, one of the greatest works of French literature and first of all, modern novels. <laughs> Never have heard of it. I am so excited and what I love about it too is my copy is so well loved. It has also been annotated, which is so rad. I love finding books that have already been annotated. It's so cool. Like what they highlighted is awesome. Uh, no other woman in the world runs to her husband with all the things she knows. So it feels like with this translation, it's very accessible. Oh my gosh, they even like wrote in it. And they wrote, gossip plays a huge role slash word of mouth. This is how everyone finds out about everyone else's private lives. 
such a cool find. Am I right, friends? Am I right? This is such a good find. So yeah, that is The Princess of Cleves by Madame de Lafayette. Okay, friends, this next one. This next one. I just gonna preface, I have heard really, really bad things about this book, but I don't know anything about it, though. I don't even know the plot. I just know that it's a book that I've seen around so much but I don't know if I should hang on to it or not. And again, like I said, I thrift all of these books, so I'm okay with donating it. So let me know if there's like controversy around this book because I honestly have no idea if it's a book I should read or not because I, when I hear people talk about it, specifically on booktube, they're like, ah, eek, you know, like just kind of guffawing a little bit and like, ah, don't, maybe don't. That is Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews. I just really like this copy, this like mass market paperback. Like, is this classic horror or is it like stay away, it has not aged well, don't read it? I don't know anything. So the back, unfortunately, does not have any, like, any plot description. The only thing it says is more than three million readers have been captivated by this strange, dark, terrifying tale. Oh, of passion and peril in the lives of four innocent children locked away from the world by a selfish mother. I don't know anything about it. I have obviously never read it. I don't know if I should be reading it. Why have I heard just like really bad things about it? I'm just so curious. Don't spoil anything, but just let me know, like, should I keep this? I'm okay with donating it because it was probably like 25 cents. But yeah, I just really liked this like very, very old mass market paperback copy. So that is Flowers in the Attic. Next, we're going back to like more modern literature. And that is Places No One Knows by Brenna Yovanoff. This is a book that I had heard about because of Books and Lala and Snow White Reader, where Snow White Reader like challenged Books and Lala to read this. I have just been curious. I love this cover. Okay, I'm a big fan of the color pink. I love it so much. So of course, like it's gonna entice me. So seeing a used copy at Goodwill, mwah, amazing. So this is a story about a girl who meets up with a guy. They're very different. It seems like she is like a do-gooder, straight-A student. He's a, oh yeah, he's a loser, it says in the in the book description here. It says he drinks on school nights and gets stoned, whatever, and then one night she falls asleep and dreams herself into his bedroom. And they have like dreams together? I'm curious, I'm excited. I feel like this would be such a fun, like spring, summer read. So definitely want to get books for every type of season of the year. I'm such a seasonal reader. Like right now in winter, I definitely want to read more like classics, historical fiction, more chunky books. And then in spring and summer, I definitely want things more like plot driven or more like light and fluffy and airy. So I feel like this would be such a fun one. I mean, this cover just screams summer to me. So really happy I found this used. Such a good find, really nice hard cover. So yeah, places no one knows. I think one of these books has a lot of dust and I feel like I've just been like on the verge of sneezing for the past like two minutes, so. Woo, okay. Next, the last book that I found at that Goodwill, so that last haul, uh, is a book I'm actually currently reading. So stay tuned for a reading vlog coming soon, probably, of Flemprier's Dictionary by Lawrence Norfolk. Holy crap, I am a whopping 20 pages in, uh, 22 pages in. So I can't fully recommend this book yet, but whew, wow. Stay tuned for that reading vlog because this is your gothic, like scholar, main character, demons, Greek mythology, French. Atmosphere is amazing and the language is so, so flowery and beautiful and intense and rich. It reads like a classic and even on the back it is blurbed and reviewed as having like a Charles Dickens vibe and a first novel of Victorian proportions, swollen with scholarship and rich with the Dickensian the subplots, it marks an astonishing debut. This is amazing, came out in the very early 1990s. This is debut novel. I am just beyond amazed. It is so, so good. Close up of this cover, which I actually really dig. It's so good, yo. So yeah, it follows this guy in the 1780s. Uh, I believe it takes place in France, but I haven't been able to pinpoint that yet. 
and he is a scholar, he's very intellectual, and he studies Greek mythology, and then he uncovers this, like, family, I don't know, like, curse, I think? And there's, like, demons involved, or, like, malevolent kind of spirits that somehow also impact the East India Trading Company. I don't know. I don't know where this is going, but I'm loving it, so definitely stay tuned for a reading vlog because I talk about it way more in depth then. And I can't wait to read more of this. Like this is a huge book though. It's just over 400 pages, but with the writing style, it is so dense. Like it does read like a classic, very rich, very like purple prose writing. I am a fan. I'm a sucker for that. Like I'm, I'm really loving this. So I hope my love for it continues, but this was such a good thrift store find. I can't believe it. So unique. Hardly anyone on Goodreads has marked this as red. It's like just barely over a thousand people. So yeah, this is really good. Can't wait to talk about it more. Can't wait to read it more. And hopefully I still enjoy it as much as I do at the time of filming this. So that's Lemprier's Dictionary. Next is a really cool book that my dear friend, she's so sweet. She says she always checks out little free libraries to look for books for me. <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> She, last time we hung out, she gave me And Now I Spill the Family Secrets, which is an illustrated memoir. Do you hear that wind? Jeez. Uh, by Margaret Kimball. This is so stunning, friends. I wish I could tell you, like, how good this book feels. It's so heavy and it's just absolutely beautiful. And it is a graphic novel of this woman's family, but it's sounds very content warning very content heavy with some very disturbing family issues and dynamics i think it talks a lot about mental health and her mother attempting suicide and just some very very heavy topics so she uses old diary entries hospital records home videos and other archives to piece together a narrative map of her childhood so a lot about mental health a lot about family but i love that it's in this like illustration graphic novel like so unique i've just never seen this book before and i've never even heard of it this is just so cool so thank you thank you thank you to my friend who thought of me and picked this up for me like i felt so bad taking it i was like don't you want this <laughs> it's so cool so thank you this is awesome i i can't wait to read this one then in my latest vlog which i'll link down below when i went to an estate sale warehouse where i found this beauty this beauty actual beauty i found some books i found some books and i was alluding to you all that i was gonna film a book haul soon so here it is here are the books that i found at that estate sale warehouse first is the Buccaneers by Edith Wharton. I love this edition so much, so much. It's beautiful. And then look at this picture on the back. Amazing. So stunning. I love this format. Same with Lemperier's Dictionary. Like I love huge paperbacks like this. I can't tell you why. Like it's just so stunning and big. So my relationship with Edith Wharton is kind of non-existent. I do have her book Twilight Sleep on my TBR down here. I started reading one of her books, oh my gosh, probably when I was in high school, but I just wasn't in the mindset to read this writing style, this kind of more classic writing. I don't know. I just wasn't there yet, but now I'm like, I can't wait to read more by Edith Wharton. So this is actually a lively posthumous collaboration. So Marion Mainwaring has completed Edith Wharton's unfinished novel of American beauties questing for British titles and British titles questing for American dollars. Wharton wrote this last of her splendid fictions when Edward VIII was marrying the American divorcee Mrs. Simpson. Mainwaring has added gloss to the story's original elegance and wit and the novel emerges like a master's painting from the hands of a highly skilled restorer. So this copy is, yeah, Edith Wharton didn't get to finish it, so Marion Mainwaring completed it. So this was originally, let's see, published 1993. I'm very excited. So I don't know which Edith Wharton I'm going to read first, either Twilight Sleep or The Buccaneers. Both I have found secondhand, which is awesome. But this cover is... I'm just loving it. I'm loving it. I can't wait to get into Edith Wharton. I really did enjoy my first reading experience of it. I just don't think... I had the mental capacity but also like the patience to read it. So I'm really excited to revisit her work and get into it and hopefully I really enjoy it because I feel like I always see Edith Wharton books when I'm out thrifting. I don't know why. So it's been hard to just like chill out and not buy all of them. I want to see if I really do like her writing style. So that is The Buccaneers. And then the only other book I found at that estate sale warehouse is Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. 
So I have heard pretty good things about Tender is the Night. I am that person who's only ever read The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I definitely enjoyed it, but I mean, did Zelda write it? We don't know. Uh, I think she wrote at least some things for sure. I think that there's definitely some like red flags going on between F. Scott and Zelda. But I'm curious about Tender as the Night. I want to read more because I really did love the writing style of The Great Gatsby. Like a thousand percent. I think I've read that one two or three times and I'm just not a rereader at all. Like I want to be a rereader, but there's just so many good books that I'm like, I just need to keep reading new books that I find. This was a great find. Uh, Tender is the Night. There is no plot on the back, so I honestly have no idea what Tender is the Night is about. I'm kind of gonna just keep it that way yet again and see if I can just like fall into it, find a rhythm with it, and enjoy yet another F. Scott Fitzgerald book. So yeah, this was a really good find. In that same kind of video, my friend and I then went to Goodwill where I found a copy of The Glass Menagerie by Tennessee Williams. I freaking love this edition. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? Look at how beautiful this is. So stunning so stunning it's just so cool and beautiful i feel like that girl when i have this book like i can just put it in a tote bag and be reading the freaking the glass menagerie so this copy itself let's see if i can find when this one came out it says reset edition 1970 so i don't know if that's what this is i don't know when this copy in particular was published unfortunately but it's beautiful it's so beautiful so this is a play but I know nothing about it. And again, there's no description on the back. So I'm just like, you know, I feel like as we're older, it's just really good to find kind of like classic pieces of both literature, but also like plays and art and like almost educate myself. That's what I feel like. Because in my like thrift with me video a while ago, again, I'll link it down below. Several of you commented that like you were surprised I had never heard of A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. And for me, it's hard almost not to personalize that, but it's like, again, it's one of those things like you don't know what you don't know. Like I wasn't taught anything about Raisin in the Sun. So now that I'm older, I am trying to educate myself and finding plays and poems and literature that like I didn't get to experience while in school and in my own class curriculum. So I feel like The Glass Menagerie is a really good one, but I did read Streetcar Named Desire. I absolutely loved it. I love the characters, Blanche and Stella. It was just so fascinating. I really fell in love with like reading plays, I think through Streetcar Named Desire. It was just so good. So I'm really excited to read The Glass Menagerie. I have no idea what to expect, but I really loved reading Raisin in the Sun, which is also a play format. It was my first time since leaving high school that I read a play like in a book format and I loved it. And then since then I've also read for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow isn't enough by Antuzake Shange. But for colored girls is like a choreo poem that was written as a play. So there are like stagehand directions, but for reading more plays, I think is just so, so cool. And I feel like this is a great introduction kind of going into more in depth classic plays. So yeah, again, I can't get over this cover. I think it's so stunning, so simple. I want more modern books to look like this. Can we please more new books? It's beautiful. So that's the glass, glass that's the glass menagerie. <laughs> that's the glass menagerie. Okay, friends, the only brand new book that I have bought in the past like two months is <laughs> Family of Origin by CJ Hauser. I found this in the bargain section of my grocery store. They have $5 brand new books. Beautiful cover. So stunning. If you are a regular on this channel, you might know that I have a very, very fond obsession with flora and fauna descriptions in literature. It's my jam. I love lists of things. I love the natural world. I am not a nature gal in real life. I'm not, I've never even been camping, but I just love reading descriptions of wildlife and nature so much. I think it's so beautiful. I don't know why it works for me, but it works for me. And this book follows a family, a son and his father is a prominent biologist and he drowned on this island. And his estranged older half sister helps pick up the pieces and try to find out like what happened to their father. So they travel to this isolated island. They start understanding a little bit more about what his father was studying, which was a rare sea duck. And it just talks about like living on this island and 
rediscovering family secrets and family dynamics but through I don't know almost like birds and wildlife and isolated islands like it's just so like my jam if you're gonna tell a story like weave it with some like science and biology flora fauna wildlife so this is absolutely beautiful I feel like this is again gonna be another really good like spring summer book to read I think this cover this illustration is just really really cool so that is family of origin Oh my goodness, friends, we are nearing the end here. So these next few books are also from that vlog <laughs> uh, where I went to my local indie bookstore with my mom and they actually had a $1 book sale going on. So they take in used books. So these were originally on their used bookshelves and I'm so sorry if this bothers you, but I have not yet taken the stickers off of the front. I don't know why they put the stickers on the front, so I'm sorry but they were discounted. So this one was originally $6, but it was in their $1 book section. So I kind of went nuts. I ended up buying five books and each was a dollar. So that's really awesome. And these are all so unique and I can't wait to read them. I feel like I'm almost like most excited to read these last, not just because they're the most recent that I've picked up, but because I have been trying so hard to like I've mentioned before in this video, find my style and like what I enjoy in literature. And I realize more and more, I love tiny books. I think that short books have such a strong impact. I absolutely love the feeling of reading a really big book and the satisfaction of closing said book when you're done and seeing it on your shelves. I, I do find that awesome, but sometimes I do feel like there's just unneeded information thrown into a big book and it could just be condensed and I love little books. I feel like there's so much more to analyze for me personally. You can tell a whole story or just a snippet of someone's life. I absolutely love vague vignettes. I love ambiguity. It just works. So all of these books, the five that I got at that uh, $1 book sale are so small and I think that's also part of a reason why I'm really excited to read them because one, you can maybe like fly through them, you can read a lot, but they just have like such a big impact and I don't, I don't quite know why they work so well with me, but it's something that I want to keep pursuing as I grow my personal library and as I just kind of like continue discovering what I personally really enjoy about literature. So let me tell you about these books because they're really, really cool and a lot of them on Goodreads have hardly any rating. So first is Interviewing Matisse or The Woman Who Died Standing Up by Lily Tuck. Again, I'm sorry about the sticker on the front. I know it's annoying, but this cover is so, so cool. So this is about two women having a phone conversation and I did start reading it and it is just paragraphs of what they said to each other over the phone when one of their other friend is found dead. Late one dire night, Molly telephones from Connecticut to catch Lily up with the news. Inez's corpse, near naked but wearing boots, has been discovered propped up like a broom, quote unquote, in a corner of her Soho loft. It is an occasion ripe for an all night heart to heart conversation, bouncing deliriously from one evasion to the next until the pair of talk crazy, talk weary women have successfully diverted themselves with all the wonderfully vagrant stuff of life with everything in fact, except grief. So this is literally the entire book is just their conversation on the phone, this whole book, where it starts with this woman telling her friend like our friend is dead and she died standing up naked wearing boots and then it just goes on to them talking about their memories the stupid things that they did that day the very like minute details that they just find interesting and so they end up not even talking about their own grief and i just find that so so interesting and fascinating so this is just such a cool book so unique i've never heard of it but again another book from the year 1991 fan of 90s literature that is me very excited to read this one. Oh my gosh, my battery is going to die soon, so I'm gonna try and hurry. Next is a Twinkle Twinkle by Kaori. Oh, this font is impossible to read. What is this person's name? Kaori Ikuni, which is translated by Emi Shimokawa. I love this, watch this. Look at that hardcover. Oh my gosh, it's so, so cool. And then this goes over into their faces. But it is about a young couple that gets married, but they uh, do not have sexual intercourse. Basically, because I believe the man in the relationship is gay and has a boyfriend, while the woman in the relationship has severe emotional stability. But they found each other 
and they're a perfect partner for a sham marriage to please their parents. So it just sounds really, really interesting and unique. The writing style is really gorgeous already. It sounds very absurd and bizarre. One of those writing styles that you just don't understand if something's happening in real life or if it's in a character's head. Really, really interested in reading this one. I feel like, again, very good spring summer book, but I am so excited. I absolutely love translated work so much. I'm really, really excited about this one. One dollar, friends. One dollar. I don't understand. <laughs> Next is a very interesting book that uh, I was kind of debating not getting, but it is Letters to Pauline by Stendhal. So this is a collection of actual letters that the author Stendhal wrote to his sister. Um, he was an admirer of Napoleon and a religious dissident. Stendhal was regarded with some ambivalence during his lifetime. However, he has since come to be recognized as an originator of the modern novel, and today he is celebrated as one of the great figures of French literature. So these are just like actual letters that he sent to his sister, but we don't get any correspondences, I don't believe, like from his sister to him. So it's him like talking about, you know, what she should learn at school, what she should study and read, like Shakespeare, philosophy, logic, math, music, whether to get married, and generally just like how to grow up and be a person. So he's like giving her advice in these really long letters dating from the early 1800s. So I don't know, I find it really interesting. I don't feel like this is a book you can just like read cover to cover, but I feel like it's just such an interesting, interesting book and copy. And it is translated by Andrew Brown. So that is Letters to Pauline. Next, this book seems so up my alley. Okay, this is Reckless Appetites, a culinary romance by Jacqueline de Val. Beautiful cover. I absolutely love this cover. It's so stunning. This is a book that is about a love story of a woman. This is again early 90s literary fiction. It tells the story of a beautiful young woman named Pome, a passionate cook with a restless hunger who looks to the lives of great writers to shape her own romantic and creative life. And this tale of her life is told and woven through an inspired blend of fiction, literary history, and culinary anecdotes. So there are recipes in here. And she is a big, big fan of, what's the author's name? Colette. It's just so unique and cool and like weird and I've just never, I just love reading about food and having recipes and cooking and books. It is so, so delicious. I love descriptions of food so much and this is just so unique and again this cover is beautiful. So yeah, this is just like a little tiny love story almost. And it does say on the back that deliciously uncovers nearly 100 recipes and it recommends Charles Dickens' Champagne Punch and Virginia Woolf's Cottage Loaves, but wards you away from the Count of Monte Cristo's Poisoned Lemonade. So I have no idea what to expect, but it sounds just so comforting, like a woman trying to find love, but also she's just really into classic literature and cooking. A dream, that's honestly a dream. So that is Reckless Appetites. And then the last book that I found at the $1 book section is The Body Artist by Don DeLeo. It could be DeLillo, DeLeo, not 100% sure. And this is a very interesting book. I did start reading it while I was there just to see if I vibed with it. And it is a spare seductive novel and inhabits the muted world of Lauren, who is an artist whose work defies the limits of the body. She is living on a lonely coast in a rambling rented house where she encounters a strange ageless man, a man with uncanny knowledge of her own life. Together they begin a journey into the wilderness of time, time, love, and human perception. So a very short, very tiny, beautiful book about a relationship and art and I love when books have like really big meaning like that where it's like time, love, and human perception. And the writing style is, again, very bizarre and ambiguous and confusing. And that is just so my jam, like when the writing itself is an art form and maybe it is plotless and just a little meandering, but like, I love it. I'm so excited to read this one. It sounds so cool. And then lastly, friends, we have made it to the end. How long is this video going to be? I'm so curious. Uh, last one is a book that I actually listened to on audio. Fell in love with it. Uh, it might be one of my favorite books that I've read so far this month in February, and that is Midwinter Blood by Marcus Sedgwick. So this is a beautiful cover copy that I found on Thrift Books for like $3. And this edition, if you try and buy it like brand new, I looked on like Amazon, it was $40. <laughs> so Thrift Books, 
thrift books for the win thank you thrift books so much this copy is so stunning i loved this book i love this book so much so i have read it i loved it so much that i wanted to buy a copy i wanted to reread it at some point i want to pass it on to my partner or any friends who are interested i loved it this is told in a series of almost like vignettes or short stories that all have an underlying theme um, and I can only say that because I've actually read the book. It doesn't really allude to that on the back, but uh, it starts in the year 2073 on this island with a man and there's stuff to do with a poisonous kind of like flower and botany um, and every story while it seems like nothing really is the same characters names are similar they're on the same island and there's references to like a plant in botany and then things happen so uh this was in the horror genre on libby i think that's where i listened to it i didn't find it very horrifying i actually found it very sentimental and sweet and bizarre and i really loved it and the writing style was very like accessible and it was a great audiobook so if you can find it on hoopla or libby I definitely recommend it. So that is Midwinter Blood. I loved it so much and I'm so happy I have my own copy now. So there we have it friends. That is my absolutely massive book haul of the books I've accumulated this winter and thrifted and found at unique places and such unique books but also some classics and a little bit more contemporary modern books but I'm so happy. I have so much reading to do and I'm so excited to get to these books. So thank you so incredibly much for being here. If you made it to the end, I would love to hear your thoughts on like what book you are most interested in hearing more about, um, me reading or a book that maybe you've already read or heard of or if you don't want to comment any of that feel free to comment like just like a book stack a bunch of book stacks because these are some beautiful stacks thank you so so incredibly much for being here friends i really appreciate it i'm so excited about these books i'm like geeking out and i hope this inspires you all to go thrifting check out books that you've never heard pick up books that you've never heard about that are unique that are published in anywhere from the 1800s to late 1990s early 2000s modern day whatever like there are gonna be cool books almost anywhere you go if you check out used places or even like I said the bargain section of your grocery store you never know what you're gonna find so thank you all so incredibly much for being here I hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much and I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video stay cozy my friends friends. Bye!